How many of you ready? I, I am ready. Paul said it this way. I'm ready to preach the gospel. He's ready. I'm ready to preach the good news. We're ready to speak what God speaks over us. I want to thank God for Jesus. Jesus is alive. He is the expression of God on earth. Heaven came to earth, took a human form, and went around, the Bible says, doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. So Jesus is going about doing good and healing all. So I want to thank God that we can just grab a hold to what Jesus is doing and say, Lord, I want to receive the goodness that you have for my life, the healing that you have for my life. In Jesus' name. Today, I have a special message today. Getting your mouth saved. The 30-day challenge. Getting your mouth saved. The 30-day challenge. Now, if I would just come out and say, let's do a 30-day challenge. Most people would think it's what you put in your mouth. What kind of food am I, what kind of diet am I going on, you know? And so we say a 30-day challenge. Well, let's see if I can last 30 days eating the right things. But here, we're talking about getting your mouth saved, not necessarily what you eat. It's what comes out of your mouth that we're really talking about today. I want to start really uh, with this scripture in James chapter 3, talking about controlling the tongue. And it talks about, uh, in verse 2, everybody makes mistakes. That's what it says. We all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, listen to this word. If we could control our tongues, we would be perfect. Wow. I mean, we could just stop there. If you could control your tongue, you would be perfect. That's right. And, listen to this, if, you, if we could control our tongues, we'd be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. If you could control your tongue, you would be perfect and you would control yourself in every other way. So it's very important what comes out of your mouth, the words you speak. And it talks about, in verse 7, that people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles. My daughter loves reptiles. I would watch her take dragons in it and she would tame them some kind of way. And even fish. You know, you go to the aquariums and they talk into dolphins and orca whales and all of that stuff. So it's, it's amazing. But in verse eight, it says, no one can tame the tongue. You can't tame it. So something has to happen to it if we're gonna control our tongues. You can't tame it. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. Verse 10, and so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Can you imagine? I don't know if that ever happened to you, blessing and cursing, you're saying good things and bad things. You're saying, I bless you, and then it unblesses you at the same time. Blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grape vine produce figs? So it's trying to say there's something that should be coming out of our mouths, but sometimes it's, it's not the same fruit that we're proclaiming it to be. It says in this translation, no, and you cannot draw fresh water from a salty spring. Then it goes in verse 13. If you're wise and understand God's ways, prove it. I, I, I just stopped right there. Prove it. How? By living an honorable life, doing good works, and with the humility that comes from wisdom. So we're talking today about getting your mouth saved. I remember uh, being saved when I was, you know, my, in my spirit. Suddenly I was different. I was just testifying to a little 14-year-old yesterday how I got saved and I was Ask her her name. And I said, do you know what your name means? It means a little flower. I said, well, there's another meaning. It means that, that you belong to Christ. It means you're a Christian. So you're a little flower bringing fragrance. Every time you say your name, every time somebody calls your name, it's like you're bringing fragrance to Christ. 
You're a sweet smelling uh, savor, a fragrance unto God. And I was sharing the gospel and she was telling me that her Christian grandmother had always saw their side of the family as sinners, that they weren't like everybody else. They kind of put them down. I said, well, go tell your grandmother that Jesus was the friend of the sinner and came to your house and saved you. And so I shared with her um, that basically what I was speaking was different than what other people were speaking. So you could have somebody speaking a curse over you and all your generations, your whole side of your family. Or you could have somebody speaking blessings. So today we're talking about getting your mouth saved, getting your mouth to line up to the new creation that you are. The Bible says if any man or woman is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things become new. And so if we could speak out of the newness, you see, that our, our words would match who we are in the spirit. And that's what we're talking about, getting our mouth saved, lining up with the salvation people that we have become in Christ. And I'm just going to say, let's do a 30-day challenge and just say for the next 30 days, you know, then just, just put it on the calendar and just every day see whether your speech is lining up with your spirit and just watch over it. You don't even have to have anybody else tell you. You can tell you. You can look in the mirror and say, well, how are you doing with that speech today? How did it go today? Was it a fountain of pure water or was it a little salty there? Was there just blessing coming out or was there curse? Was there a mixture? And that's what it said. If we could control our tongues, let's just do a 30 day challenge. If we could control our tongues, we'd be perfect. And we could control ourselves in every other way. Wow. Our mouths are important. That's why God gave us one. Can you say amen? So I have some, a lot of things to share with you, but I have, I like to um, give you one more scripture. Proverbs 18, 21. This is a very important scripture, Proverbs 18, 21. Death, it says death first, by the way, and life, are in the power of the tongue. I mean, your tongue can kill or it can bring life. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to either eat death or you're going to eat life. You're going to, you are going to eat the fruit of what's coming. But if you really love life, and that's what we have to do is get to a place we love life so much that we eat the fruit of the life that's coming out of our mouth. I think people know this scripture, but I don't know if they know this scripture. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What you speak is either going to kill some things or bring things to life. It's either dead or alive. And you determine it by your words. That's powerful. And so the first, I like to have three points just so we'll know where we're pointed. We're talking about, what's the title of the message? Getting your mouth saved. Where it's lined up with who you are in the spirit. Now, if you're not saved, and I shared with this 14-year-old how to be saved. If you're not saved, you go to God and say, I am a sinner. <laughs> I have messed up so bad. I remember the night I got saved and I, I shared my testimony yesterday, how I got saved and I lifted my hands to heaven and it was tornado warnings and tornado type clouds. It wasn't a tornado, but the dark cloud blowing by at high speeds. And I'm looking up at these clouds when I finally made the decision to give my life to God. And there I was on my sidewalk. I call it the, the Damascus sidewalk experience. I lifted my hands to heaven and I began to say, Lord, I, that's it. That's it. Tonight, I'm deciding to give my life to you. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins and my godless way of life. I've been going in my direction. Now I want to go in your direction. And I ask you to do whatever it is you do to save somebody like me. I believe in you. I receive you as my Savior. I confess you as my Lord. From this day forward, I will follow you all the days of my life. I'll do what you tell me to do. I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll be who you call me to be. And when I put my hands down, and I said, I also said, I believe that I become right now born again as a child of God. I receive my salvation from you. 
and I plead the blood of Jesus. I put my hands down. My head, my head was still up, but I put my hands down and I knew I was different. I was totally changed. And I looked up and I kept looking up because when I had first started speaking, you know, this testimony was supernatural. It was like a movie. It was like I was watching Charlton Heston in a movie. Suddenly the sky opened as I'm talking. It went, and in the shape of a triangle, there were three stars that I recognized from my Catholic upbringing. That's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you're listening to me. And I know that you're agreeing with me right now. And then as I finished my prayer and I knew I was saved, the clouds came back together. It was like, wow. It wasn't the miracle of what I saw that got me saved. But what got me, when, when I was getting saved, I saw the miracle that God wanted to do. He wanted to open the sky to me. He wanted the covenant to come and speak. He wanted to say to me, I agree with your words. Words brought life to me that day. My words. Just a few minutes earlier, I said, when, I, when he revealed to me, I said, I'm never going to get saved unless I know what it means. Listen to those words. I'll, I'll never know. I'll never get sick. And so he showed me what it meant. He says to be saved is to give your life to me and never take it back. Never change your mind. You are mine forever. Well, I'm not doing that, I said. That's crazy. Tomorrow morning there'll be daylight. And, you know, I'm a lawyer and I'm going to be about my business. And all this will seem like it's crazy. But then I finally got to a place the Spirit of God was pulling me so strong. I planted my feet like that. And when I planted my feet, I said, that's it. You see, this is what we're talking about, getting your mouth saved and get the 30-day challenge. You say, that's it. My mouth is going to be changed. Life and death is coming out. Death and life, I'm switching it around. It's going to be life that comes out of my mouth in Jesus' name. I choose life. Jesus even, even has, uh, tells, us, tells us that he was the life of God. Jesus Everywhere he went, he was releasing the good news of life. Hmm, that's it. The challenge is taken. Now, when I take the 30-day challenge, it's going to last a lot longer than 30 days. But you see, if you can do something for 30 days, at least you're making it your, your aim to make sure it happens. So the first point is this. How do we get to save our mouths? How do we get to a place where we actually win this challenge that we're speaking life and not death and not a mixture. Number one, you distill. That's a funny word. I'm gonna give you the definition. You distill, D-I-S-T-I-L-L, -L, the heavenly speech to become your inner voice from which you speak. You distill the heavenly speech. You know heaven's talking to you? Heaven's talking to me. Heaven's speaking. Heaven had been speaking to me to get saved and I was just saying, no, I'm not. I remember when, when my uh, brother-in-law and my sister-in-law came visit us at the house and they said, you're gonna, they were leaving the house at that moment. We had been talking about a lot of things and they were leaving the house and they turned around and said, uh, you're gonna be saved. And I looked at them and said, read my lips. I will never be saved. You hear me? And they said, read my lips. You will be saved whether you like it or not because you're a family and we have the promise of our family. And so you're going to be saved whether you like it or not, but you're going to like it. That was words. I was speaking death. They were speaking life. When we release life and it hits death, life will cause things to come alive in Jesus' name. Resurrection power will be released. So we have to distill. What is God saying? You see, when I talk about distilling the heavenly speech. God's speaking to me. God's speaking to you every day. So we have to distill the heavenly speech to become our inner voice from which we speak. You speak from an inner voice. You speak from a spring. And so we want the spring to be pure. We don't want it to be a mixture of impure and pure. We want it to be pure. So we want your, this is how I'm going to say it. Your speech comes from your inner voice. We want it to be distilled, the heavenly speech, where God becomes our inner voice. Where God begins to speak in our inner voice. And we become the inner voice. 
we begin to speak, but it's heavenly speech distilled into our inner voice and we speak the inner voice of God. So let's see what distill means. It means to purify like a liquid. It means to purify by vaporizing it, then condensing it by cooling the vapor and collecting the resulting liquid. So I'm going to say it again. It, it's to purify like a liquid. Now we, I, sometimes, you know, we, we have an iron. You know what an iron is? Like you iron clothes. So we iron in our clothes. And you, it needs water in there because it's a steam iron. If you just put any water in there, you know, like, oh, we're going to get a bottle of water, just pour water in there or from the faucet. After a while, you press the steam button, all kinds of stuff comes out on your clothes. You ever had that happen? Like salt comes out. Where's all that salt coming from? So I learned you need to get distilled water. It's pure. You put distilled water in there, you, you're getting rid of all the elements that you don't want on your clothes, you see. So it's to purify by vaporizing, then condensing it. it the, the similar words would be purify, refine, filter, treat, process. I have different definitions. It's extracting the essence of something by heating it with a solvent, that's another definition, where you're taking out things and then you're concentrating the purification. It also means extracting the essential meaning or most important aspects of something. Like if you're, you're distilling your notes and putting it into a book, you're taking the essential meaning, the most important things and you're putting it in. I, I, another definition, to make a liquid stronger or purer by heating it until it changes to a gas, cooling it so it changes back to a liquid. One other thing, how do you distill something? The liquid is simply passed from a container under high atmospheric pressure to one under low pressure. And the reduced pressure causes the liquid to vaporize rapidly, resulting vapor is then condensed into back into a liquid and distill it. Uh, so so when, when I'm saying this, the Lord has this high pressure liquid of heaven. And as we take the process, because this distillation of getting God's voice to become our inner voice, it's a process. And what the process does, it's taking something that's pure and vaporizing it in us to such a degree that all the impure stuff is moved out of the way and it just becomes pure word. It's God's word speaking to us. And so in essence, what I'm saying, trying to make it simple, that I wanna go back and read the, to read it, distilling the heavenly speech. Lord, I wanna take all the noise of the world and my own inner thoughts and I and here's your voice and here's my voice and here's my thoughts and here's your thoughts and here's my way, here's your way. Lord, I just need something to happen to where that all of that is purified to where when it gets down into who I am and what I speak, it has become pure, a pure spring. So when it comes out of my mouth, I know it's thus said the Lord. This is what the Lord said, it's spirit inspiration. It's the spirit of God speaking. So all of a sudden when you're talking, you, you're hearing God say stuff. And you know it's not even your speech. It's like, wow, where did that come from? And then you begin to do this as a habit. It's like, it, it's just a normal thing to speak. And you know it's God speaking. This is what we're talking about. Distilling the heavenly speech but we're really distilling it because it's so mixed up with all of our own ways and own thoughts that suddenly when it all comes out, the inner voice comes from a pure spring. That God becomes, God's voice becomes our inner voice. Wow. Isaiah 30 verse 21 says, your ears you see, for this to happen, you have to have ears. That's why Jesus was always walking around saying, he who has ears, you have any ears? Okay, but I'm just talking to the ears that hear. Do you have an ear that hear? Do you have ears to hear? He who hath an ear to hear. Hear what? The inner voice of God, the heavenly speech being processed through all of that stuff that's in you and it comes out, 
I have an ear to hear. I have a listening ear. I hear you, Lord. Even in the chaos and of, of what's going on in your own life and the things that are around you, I hear the Spirit. I hear the Spirit of God speaking. Wow, I hear it. And so your ears, I want to say this to you, shall hear. I want to say it this way. Your ears shall hear. Because God gave us ears that hear. He who hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I'm, if anybody on the planet has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, it's me. It's my ears, God. Not this. Well, you know, God, I don't hear too good. Sometimes I hear you. Sometimes I think it's you. Sometimes I... No. Stop. Lord, your word says your ears shall hear. Yes. I have listening ears. I have hearing ears. I have ears that hear the spirit of God. My ears are opening to hear the spirit of God. Listen to this. Isaiah 30 verse 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you. Hmm. And it's saying, this is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. Lord, every turn I make in life, I'm hearing the Spirit of God speak to me. This is the way to go. This is what I need to say. This is what I need to do. Wow. I have that kind of ear. Yes. I said, I have that kind of ear. I say, we have that kind of ear. Your ear shall hear a word that's given you the right thing to say and the right thing to do. Can you say amen? Yeah. So the first thing is to distill. It's a process. I'm talking about getting your mouth saved. How do you get your mouth saved? Get your ears distilling the spirit speech of God, the heaven speech, and it becomes your inner voice. Oh, this is good. I have the inner voice of God speaking to me. God is within me. I have become the temple of God, where God inhabits me and speaks to me directly through the Spirit. Wow. Man, what kind of speech is that? You could look at yourself in the mirror and say, wow, not only do you have good teeth because you're brushing your teeth, but you're brushing your words, making sure it's the Spirit words that are coming out of your mouth. Can you say my, amen? So distill the heavenly speech to become your inner voice from which you speak. Number two, is to declare blessings of heaven over you and your world. God said, choose blessings. God, there's, there, you could choose blessing or you could choose curse. Which one you want? Then God, just to make sure you get the right answer, he gave us the answer. He said, choose blessing. Choose blessing. And so we declare blessings. So this is what we do. We get to distill what God has put in us. We understand, we hear the inner voice of God. It becomes our inner voice. And now you use that voice to declare blessings of heaven over you and your world, whatever your world is. It could be your family world, your marriage world, your, your situation world, your financial world, whatever world it is that you're looking at at the time, declare blessings of heaven over you and your world. In other words, God speaks, listen, if you're hearing heaven speech, God speaks what he sees and wants to see manifest. He could see the creation of man. So he said, we create man in our image. He could see it. So he said it. God speaks what he sees and what he wants to see manifest. So then we declare blessings of heaven over you and your world. We speak what we see and what we want to see manifest. What do you want to see in your world? Speak that. God will already be showing you, speak this. And we choose to speak it and we speak what we see in the spirit and what we want to see manifest. So we speak what God speaks. And that's the purpose of listening. We speak what God speaks. And so people say, what do you think about that situation over there? I've, I've learned to say this. I don't. What do you mean? You don't think? No. I want to ask God what he thinks about that situation. What do you think about that, God? You see, if we want to get the 30-day challenge down deep in us, 
Each time we have a tendency to say, we back off and say, God, I have all kinds of thoughts here. We need the distillery to go on in here and get it down into me. What do you speak about this situation? I'm listening. Oh, that's what you think. That's what I speak. Now, sometimes we have situations, God said, it's not, it's not going to be pretty what's getting ready to happen. This is going to happen. Okay, God, that's going to happen. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say in that situation? Oh, there's a storm coming. What do you want me to do? Stand up and speak to the storm. Don't let the storm speak to you. You stand up and speak to the storm. Peace, be still. It don't look like it's peaceful. It don't look. I speak peace, be still in Jesus' name. God speaks what he sees and wants to manifest. We speak what we see and want to manifest. Many times we just describe what we see manifesting. But God wants us to call those things that aren't manifesting, the things that God says he wants to manifest, call those things that don't exist, they, they don't be, as though they already be. They already are. We, heard, we know the scripture. God calls those things that be not as though it already is. And so he wants us to speak like he speaks. He said, say this. Why? Somebody's got to do the speaking to change things. Might as well be me. This is what I've made up my mind long ago. If anybody on the planet is going to, you need anybody to say anything, choose me. I'll say it. I'll decree it. So we declare blessings of heaven over you and your world. Third, and then I'm going to give you some more scriptures. So let's go back. We just, how do you get your mouth saved? You distill the heavenly speech to become your inner voice from which you speak. And you begin to hear that voice and you declare, God is not wanting to curse people. Jesus said, I didn't come here to condemn you. You already condemned. I came to save you. So he declared the blessings. He blessed all poor. He started, I mean, he went out on a big mountain, you know, he said, blessed all the poor. They didn't have any CDs. He didn't have everything taped. It wasn't on TV. Yet we're still saying what he said. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the ones that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Oh, you're going to inherit heaven. I mean, he's talking to people saying, what? I'm going to inherit heaven. Oh, heaven's been made for you. He decreed the blessing. He could have said, oh, you bunch of people, I curse you. You haven't been listening to me. No, he said, I bless you. Now, if you don't want to be blessed, then there were some didn't want to be blessed. They said, well, you know, a reason you don't want to be blessed, your, your father, I, got, I hate to tell you this, your father is the devil. Now, if Jesus came and said, your father is the devil, I think I would have had a, a, a cross-examination inside of me and say, uh, uh, I thought my father was Abraham. No, it is the devil. You've been deceived. Well, then I need to repent. You see, it, and some did repent. Many of the priests repented. Many of the religious people repented. So listen, the third point, after you declare the blessings of heaven over you and your world, is to decree your life destiny. You know, you were put on the earth for a reason. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you were put on the earth for a reason, a purpose. You decree your life destiny over you and your generations into every situation now and in the future. You begin to decree your destiny. This is God, I want to decree. You say, well, I don't know too much about my destiny. God caused, caused you to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. You're hearing the word. God says to decree blessing, and suddenly your eyes will open. Not only is you here, your eyes will open to see. You'll begin to see, wow, God, this is why you put me here. You see, so many people say, I don't know why God put me here. Well, find out. Well, maybe before I die, when I take my last breath, I might find out. No, find out now. God, open my eyes to see my destiny for me and my family. Let me see it so I can decree it. I want to decree it. Yeah, but it, you know, it's like that, uh, what I shared earlier, this little girl was telling me, yeah, my, my grandma, you know, she's a, she's a real Jesus person, but she says we're, we're the part of the family, like, you know, the center part. Well, tell her to go that, that Jesus came to the center's house and saved them. I was one of them. I didn't go to his house, so he came to my house. Ask her what she thinks about that. 
You see, we need to start decreeing. And I shared with this little girl. I said, God saved you for a purpose. And I began to tell her. She started telling me, you know, she did. You know, how are you doing in school? Oh, I don't do good in school. I said, what do you like doing? Oh, I like this. I like that. What part of school you like? I like that. I said, focus on that. I said, you'll find what you call to be in the passion that's inside of you. Follow that. Ask God to show you. You see, ask God to show you. Why am I here? One of the things that God wants us to understand, not only you, but your children and your ch children's children. I've been saying it down to a thousand generations and beyond. God thinks in terms of thousand generations. He sees you as a, a vital link to bring the heavenly speech and declare the heavenly blessings so that a thousand generations from now, what is happening there is linked to your speech here and your life here. Your life can change all of your generations. Why not? Decree your life destiny over you and your generations into every situation. Speak to the children and grandchildren. Speak to the generation. Speak life. Speak love. Speak kindness. Speak hope. Speak, speak faith, courage, and wisdom. Why is that so important? Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. This is the Lord speaking. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Wow. You mean, God, I can shape the destinies of generations? Yeah. How? With your mouth. Decree it. Whatever you decree on the earth, uh, you decree it, it'll be established in the heavens because I'm watching over my word that's been distilled into you, the inner voice. And now you're speaking that voice and you're blessing, not cursing your generation. You're breaking the curse off of generations and, you re and you're establishing the blessings in your generation. Yeah, but you don't know my kids. They're off of here and they're doing that. I don't care what it looks like. God didn't say, well, you know, it works if everybody lines up. No, get your mouth to line up and it'll work and you'll see people line up. Can you say amen? I love this scripture. So shall my word be that goes forth. So God's word is coming out of his mouth. Now, he gave this scripture. And right at the beginning of these scriptures in Isaiah 55, he was saying, your ways, he's telling man, are not my ways. Your thoughts, you don't even think like me. My thoughts and ways are so much higher than yours, as high as the heaven is from the earth. But he's starting to say, but you can catch it. You can catch my ways. You can distill my thoughts. And then suddenly you know this is what the Lord wants you to say. My wife helped me years ago. She, when, when I was in this process, and I would say something and she was so beautiful in how she handled it. She said, honey, look, can you, can you explain to me the words that you just spoke, how that is faith? I mean, you, I've heard how you teach faith, but it, that confuses me a little because it doesn't sound like what you said. So explain to me how that is faith. I renounce those words in Jesus' name. I, that's not what I said in the beginning. I said, no, just don't worry about it. You don't understand. No, I knew what I was doing. I was not, I was, that was some words. Come, where did that come from? The distilling process needed to be applied. She was bringing the heat in a very nice way. And so another way she helped me is she'd hear me say something. And she says, um, do you want me to agree with that? Do you want God to agree with that? No. No, I don't. No, I, I, I cancel that in Jesus' name. Lord, I, I cancel those words and I release these words instead. That was a process. It wasn't that way the first day. This is a 30-day challenge. You see, so it wasn't, a, it wasn't that way the first day. 
But you begin to say, God, you heard what just came out of my mouth. And God says, you want me to agree with that? No, cancel that. This is what I want. You see, it's a process of exchanging the inner voice so that you can speak what God says and decree your destiny. Where you're headed is in your mouth. Where I'm headed is in my mouth. My destination of where I'm going to end up in life is in my mouth. It's in your mouth. The destination of my generations in my mouth. You say, well, yeah, but what if you mess up and, you know. Well, then your voice will be removed and God will have to find somebody to rise up and begin to decree. Somebody that goes through this process. Does anybody listen? Yes. So I like when we declare the blessings and we decree the destiny Jeremiah 1 12 God's talking to Jeremiah a young boy and he becomes a prophet of God and the Lord said to me to the prophet the young boy he said what do you see and he's talking and he says you have seen well that's what the Lord says to me you have seen well you see we have to have eyes to see what is the destiny you have seen well for I am watching over my word to perform it Another translation says it this way. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching and I will certainly carry out all my plans. Wow. So we become partners with God. It's we're in partnership. Okay, God, I'm in partnership with you. I don't know why you chose me. That's how I said it in the beginning. I think you got the wrong person. That's how I said it in the beginning. I was always like Moses. You know, you know. You know it is. You know you chose me. I don't know why you did that. I told you you should have got somebody. Else. No. The distilling has to take place to where we begin to see ourselves like he sees us. That Jeremiah was doing the same thing. He even got to a place that I ain't saying nothing no more. Every time I say something, come on, everybody come against me. I'm shutting up. But he said, "Oh, but there's a fire in me. I could not refrain. I had to speak." What was he speaking? There was a distilling going on. Wow. God certainly will carry out his plans. God wants to speak. This is how I think. His amazing love and amazing grace through our lives. It's not just the speech. The speech has to line up with the person. You see what our speech has to be the inner voice of the new creation reality that we are. So he wants to speak through our lives, but also through our mouths. I love what Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. Listen to what God is saying. Decree life destiny. This was, this was the third point. Decree life destiny into every situation. Your words determine your future and the future of your generations. Your destiny is in your mouth. Your words shape your destiny and the destiny of all your generations. Your words. See, this is what motivates me to get my mouth saved because it's death and life. Everything's going to die unless life starts coming out. I love what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. For verily I say to you, I say, see, he was, his words were important. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. Get out of my way, mountain. Even the mountains that's in you, the mountains of jealousy, anger, fear, whatever it is, hopelessness, laziness, whatever. Be thou removed out of my life in Jesus' name. Whoever, I'm a whosoever, Lord. Whoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. Let's know what it says but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. He'll have whatever you say. Can you imagine? You can have whatever you say. So what you say is important. Do you really want God to agree with your mouth? Every day. 
I mean, let's go back in over the weekend or let's go back last week. Can we say, God, everything I said, I want, I want you to watch over and perform. If, he, if the answer is, mm, I don't know about that, then let's go through the distillery. Let's hear God. Let's declare blessing. Let's decree destiny. Because Jesus said, whosoever shall say it. And he said it this way, for truly I say. He's looking at me and you. Truly I say, whoever. I'm one of the whoever's, Lord. Whoever shall say. I'm one of those mountain movers, God. Whoever shall say unto this mountain. What mountain? Whatever mountain comes, this mountain is moving out of my way. Not doubt in your heart. Shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Wow. Wow. I have so many words written here. But I want to go to Isaiah. I'm going to close with this. I mean, there's a lot of scriptures I'll be sharing this year. Isaiah 45, 8. I'm going to start with the Amplified, but I'm going to jump to the Good News Translation. The Amplified, rain down, O heavens. You know, we can talk to heaven. We can talk to heaven. A lot of people spend so much time talking to hell, they don't talk to heaven. It's, one, it's good to bind the devil. Devil, I tell you in Jesus. Yeah, okay, that's one thing. But we need to speak to the heavens because the heaven is where our salvation is coming from. That's where our blessings is coming from. So I want heaven to, to know that I'm talking to heaven. That's how you start the distillery. And I'm going to read a few translations. Rain down, O heavens, from above. Let the clouds pour down righteousness. And in the Amplified, it says, all the blessings of God. Can you imagine? Rain down, O heavens from above, and let the clouds pour down righteousness and all the blessings of God. Let the earth open up. Open up generations. Open up children. Open up my own heart. Open up earth. Let salvation bear fruit. Let righteousness spring up with it. I, the Lord, have created it. He created it that way. He created us to, to speak and tell the heavens, Come on down, because earth is opening up. Is that good or what? I like what one word, uh, I had a prophetic word to us, Deborah. It says, you, well, it's a word that it's in the scriptures. Open up, open, your gates will remain open day and night. That the treasures of heaven, the abundance of the sea, all of the things will come to you. We... Open heaven, we're open day and night, 24-7, to let heaven pour down the blessings of heaven. And so as the blessings of heaven are coming down, I'm opening up to receive everything God has for me and my generations and my world. Wow. You can do that. You can do that. You can do it every day if you want to. I love this. I love this. And righteousness will spring up like a spring, the freshwater spring, the right way. If anybody on the planet, you've heard me say, I mean, why not? If anybody on the planet is going to be in the right place, right time, doing the right thing, it's going to be me. You might say, well, you can't say that. Well, maybe you can't say it, but I'm saying it. Because my mouth is saved in Jesus' name to say, here I am. Earth has opened up to receive what heaven wants to pour down. That's how you should talk to yourself and your mouth be trained to speak and decree. Is this good or what? Now, let me read. Let me read. This is going to blow you away. Let me read it from the American Standard Version. Distill. Did I read this one already? No. Distill ye heavens from above. Actually, it uses the word distill. Distill ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open that it may bring forth salvation and let it cause righteousness to spring up together because I, Jehovah, have created it. Now, actually, God is saying this. So one translation says, tell the heavens, and now it says, distill ye heavens from above. Come on, I want the inner voice of God to be my inner voice. Wow. You can pray that. Did you know you can pray that with your mouth? 
And God's watching over the word to perform it. I love the Aramaic Bible in plain English. Be delighted, heaven from above. Lord, let me be a delight. Be delight. Be delighted, heavens from above, and clouds shall sprinkle righteousness. The earth shall be opened, and salvation shall multiply. Oh, it's multiplying through my generations in Jesus' name. My children are being saved. My grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, generations are, that, are, that aren't even born are being saved in Jesus' name. It's multiplying. The earth is open. Hell, salvation is multiplying. And righteousness is springing up. Wow. As one. Wow. Shall sprout up as one. I want to read this. I have so many of I have like many, many translations. But I want to uh, read the good news translation. Which is kind of like a paraphrase. Isaiah 45, 8 to remind you. Are you ready? I'm ready, Lord. This is what the Lord says. I will send victory from the sky like rain. Lord, it looked like, if this is the mouth that has the double mouth, it looks pretty bad, Lord, like we defeated. No, no. The distillery is going on. This is the same scripture that says distill. This is what God says. I will send victory from the sky like rain. Lord, I decree and declare in every situation over my family, over my generations. And, it, and even when mountains look like they're not moving, I say they got to move in Jesus' name. I'm not doubting in my heart because you're sending victory from the sky like rain. And we're from Louisiana and we know what that means. When it rains, it pours. It pours. I will send victory from the sky like rain in Louisiana. The earth will open to receive it, to receive the victory. That means even closed hearts and closed minds and closed heads in my family, in my, in my situations, even those that people have to turn. God, you need to change their hearts to hearts of favor because those doors need to open. In Jesus' name, you're sending victory from the sky like rain and the earth is opening to receive that victory from, for me and my family and for those that are surrounding us and will blossom with freedom and justice because the Lord will make this happen. Listen, I'm going to read it again. I will send victory from the sky like rain. The earth will open to receive it and will blossom with freedom and justice. I, the Lord, will make this happen. Wow. It blows me away when I read this. I want to thank God. I want to thank God when we started. If we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. If you're wise and understand God's ways, you prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. So today, it's time to get our mouths saved. Take the 30-day challenge. Listen to, all you gotta do, so what is that? Well, first of all, you gotta go through the distillery. God, I'm opening my ears to hear I'm opening my mouth to bless and I'm going to open my eyes to see the destiny you have designed for me in my, de in my generation. And now just, I'm going to hear what comes out of my mouth. That means I'm going to have to say, God, what do you say about that? What do you see and what do you say about that? This is what I say. Well, God, if that's what you say, that's what I say. And let it come out of your mouth out loud. Don't just think it in your ear. Say it out loud. Start decreeing it. And ask God to give you boldness, like Paul said. Give me bold. He said, pray for me. I ask you to pray for me. I ask you to pray for me that God would give me boldness to proclaim the good news, the gospel, as I should. I release that to us today. In the name of Jesus, I release it to every one of us, every one of us that's listening right now. I say there is a revival of mouths getting saved. I say in the name of Jesus that there's a distillery that's taking place right now. And it's causing the purity of the springs of heaven to flow. 
in the name of Jesus, cleaning out our ears, washing out our eyes so that we can hear, decree, and declare. And we say in Jesus' name, it'll never be the same. I say this, I do it all the time. I just go around telling people. I just talk to them. I say, what's your name? Everybody wants to say their name. I say, what does it mean? Usually I'll either know it already, or before I ask them, I'll look it up real fast after they tell me their name. Hmm. Almost, now sometimes they have a name very rare, like change your name. I don't say that to them, but I don't go there. I go straight for, let me tell you, the Lord sent me here today to tell you some good news. And you, you just have to say those words and it'll start flowing out of your mouth and God will give you boldness to begin to proclaim the gospel to everybody. So let's just agree right now that God will grant us boldness to proclaim the good news as we ought to everybody he sends us to that he wants us to speak to in the name of Jesus, that we have the wisdom what to say, when to say, and how to say. I want to back off of that. Some people have the words, but they don't, they don't have the wisdom. That's why it says you have to have the wisdom. You have to have the wisdom of what to say, when to say, and how to say. And usually, when you're doing that, unless they like the devil, then the devil say, oh, why are you here to torment me before the time? It's time to torment it. Get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. But most of the time, the people are just like, wow. They'll start doing this. Oh, my God. It's like, I feel it. You've seen that happen. That was like, I feel it. Thank God. Remember the lady we were buying some things for? We were in a, it was, the door was closing in Paris. And we were buying. I wanted to go buy a little bag for my granddaughter. And it's like, the store was closing. And so I walked up as the store was closing. They were making announcements. And I looked at her. I said, well, I said, I was going to buy a bag from, you know, a bag for my, a couple of bags, I think, for my grandchildren. And uh, she said, well, let, yeah, well, go ahead, let's, let's do it. And, and we just started talking, and by the time we finished buying it, they sent the bodyguards and all from the store, and the, they had two big guys. I said, you look like a bodyguard. He said, I used to be a bodyguard at concerts. He said, now nah, I'm here. And they were here like, can you please leave? And so she says, no, he's, he has to finish his transaction. It took another 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I don't know. They were watching over us. God will send angels to watch over. And so there we were. And by the time we finished, she was thanking me and thanking them. Thank you. Because we were testifying and preaching at the same time. Thank you for coming here. I was telling her her name, what it meant. Thank you for coming here. This changed my life in a moment. In a moment, so many people, I hear them say that. Thank you. I will never forget you. How many times have I heard that? You need to start releasing. You don't need to, but you get to start releasing and hearing people say, my God, God sent you here today. And it changed my life. It changed the way I think. Wow. I released that today because we're in the business of getting our mouths saved. And we're going to do it for the next 30 days. And we're going to come back and hear testimonies of what God has done with our mouths. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Well, I want to bless you. I want to remind you that we're speaking the amazing grace and the amazing love of God. So I tell people all over the world, remember, remember, I always say this, to love one another as Jesus Christ loves you. See you next time. Bless you.